For a quarter century, Horton Fieldhouse has been home to the Illinois State Redbirds. This afternoon, the DePaul Blue Demons help bring down the curtain on Horton Fieldhouse. Shortly after the first of the year, Illinois State will be moving into brand new Redbird Arena. It's ironic because Illinois State was DePaul's last opponent at Alumni Hall in March of 1980 before the move to the horizon. The DePaul Blue Demons and the Illinois State Redbirds coming up next. Hi again, everyone, from the Horton Fieldhouse on the campus of Illinois State University, the DePaul Blue Demons meet the Redbirds of Illinois State. With John Bingo, this is Dwayne Stats. Nice to have you with us. Hope you enjoy the telecast. Well, this Illinois State Club, not only in transition on the court, but of course, because they're going to look at a new home after the first of the year, and that can make a difference, John. Well, you know, that'll be real helpful in recruiting. You know, everybody's got new arenas, and when players come in, they want to see that kind of thing. But, you know, you look around here, and you see all this noise, and the noise kind of bounces all around. That's a big advantage to a home club. There's a lot of memories here, a lot of big victories. And, you know, sometimes you lose something, maybe four or five points, maybe one or two games when you go to a big arena. So they'll have an adjustment both ways. One, good. They'll be able to recruit better players. But two, I think it'll hurt them a little bit when it comes game time. And we're going to have a full house here this afternoon, better than 7,700. Ricky Jackson is emerging as the big scorer for this Illinois State Club. Well, he's emerged as a leader. You know, last year he was an assist man. Averaged about four or five assists a game. Only averaged six or seven points. In the first three ball games, he has emerged as a leader. He's taken the ball down at the end of the game, popped that open jumper, taking the ball to the basket, and he's averaging almost 20 points a game. He, like T. Green, were, was a football player in high school. Yeah, Terrence Green also from the Flint, Michigan area, and the DePaul Blue Demons, of course, hoping that he can give them some of the senior leadership they're going to need. Well, T. looks like he's eating a few less cheeseburgers. He's got his weight down. That'll help him defensively, especially. And I think this DePaul club needs his leadership, both defensively and offensively. He needs to settle down, try not to do so much by himself, but try to include everybody else in that. College basketball coming up this afternoon. The DePaul Blue Demons against Illinois State. Back with the starting lineups in a moment. Fans are still coming in here at Horton Fieldhouse. It will be noisy this afternoon as the DePaul Blue Demons meet the Redbirds from Illinois State. Illinois State with a record of 2-1 and one coming into play this afternoon. The DePaul Blue Demons, after getting off to an 0-2 start and a 1-2 start overall in Hawaii, now with a record even on the year, two up and two down. Let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's contest as the Blue Demons come in here to close out Horton Fieldhouse, the Blue Demons having won 16 of the 18 contests played between these two teams, including the last six. Out of forward for the DePaul Blue Demons. Out of Flint, Michigan, a 6'4 senior at 210 pounds, Terrence Green. At a forward spot for Illinois State. Number 52, a 6'7 junior out of North Chicago, Gerard Coleman. At the other forward for the DePaul Blue Demons, out of Los Angeles, at 6'7, a senior, 210 pounds, number 23, Stanley Brundy. For Illinois State, at the other forward spot, the 6'5 junior out of Mount Morris, Michigan, number 43, Ricky Jackson. At center for the DePaul Blue Demons, the freshman out of Dallas, Texas, at 6'9", 210 pounds, number 21, Stephen Howard. In the middle for Illinois State, 6'9", junior from Bloomington, number 53, John Pemberton. At point guard for the DePaul Blue Demons out of Chicago Harper, a 6'3 sophomore, number 20, Melvon Foster. For Illinois State, at point, number 25, the 6'3 junior out of Peoria, Randy Blair. Rounding out the starting lineup for the DePaul Blue Demons. Number 22, out of Glenview, Illinois, 6'3 sophomore, Brad Neiman. 
And for Illinois State, the 6'5 sophomore out of St. Cloud, Minnesota, number 24, Sam Skerich. There we have the DePaul Blue Demons and the Illinois State Redbirds. Joey Meyer in his fifth year directing the DePaul Blue Demons this afternoon looking for his 90th victory. And Bob Donawald in his 11th year here at Illinois State with 197 wins under his belt. The officials, J.C. Leimbach, Rich Eichhorst, and Harry Bond on hand here this afternoon. A lot of inexperience on the court, John Mengelt. Well, I was talking to Joey Meyer before the ball game, and Coach uh, Molinari came up and said, Joey, what, what, which end do you want to take off, uh, offense or defense uh, on our end of the bench the second half because of the noise? And Joey says, I don't know. I just want offense both halves. He's really struggling offensively. He doesn't really have the creative person that he had in Rod Strickland last year, which, which really, I think, probably affects Stanley Brundy more than anybody else. Brundy got a lot of easy back baskets off Strickland. Stanley now is having to post up and is struggling down there, posting up a little bit. Not because he can't do that, but because he's not getting the ball down there. So Joey would like to see an even display of offense, both halves by his club. He's not worried about defense. They hustle hard. They're getting after it, and they're scrapping, and he knows they'll play good defense doing that. Illinois State looking for any flicker of offense as well. This is Pemberton and Brundy in the opening tip along the sideline. Goes out of bounds, and it will belong to Illinois State. They're starting very inauspiciously. Neither team looked like they really wanted that tip. That was kind of clumsy. Garage front court loses the ball, but he'll go back to get it. That's Terrence Green out there with Scarriage along the right side. A five and second a five-second call already. Interesting move. T. Green playing guard defensively out on Scarriage, uh, and I think that Melvon Foster is down low with Ricky Jackson. I think that uh, Illinois State will probably try to go down low and post up Ricky Foster, uh, Ricky Jackson. Foster out front handling the ball for DePaul. Neiman. This is Howard off the top of the key. Terrence Green, he makes a move off the glass and will not go. Brundy with the tip. Brundy off the glass and two. That's a good example of what will happen if somebody goes to the basket. You know, he didn't make the hoop, but people converged on him. That left Brundy the open lane for the tip end. Blair into the corner. Jackson comes back out front. Scarriage and Neiman the matchup now. This is Jackson. He pops and hits. That ties the game at two. He's a 45% shooter from the floor, averaging 19 a game so far this year. A little 1-4 offense. They just double screen down, and Jackson with a nice jumper. That's what he's been doing all season. Rundy springs out top. Foster. Green Howard goes inside, and with that left-handed layup, misses the shot. Ball down to Blair. Back the other way. Blair takes it to the baseline and back out. Coleman with his hands on the ball. Scary. Carries a red shirt last year because of a knee problem. Pemberton. Pemberton looking inside, finds Jackson, and he puts it up and in. Illinois State. Oh, there was the mismatch. Jackson down low on Melvon Foster, and Melvon, like the young. Uh, person he is and inexperienced took that fake and went right up. I think that uh, Illinois State will go to that lock this afternoon. They have a whistle and Howard's pass to Green and the call goes against DePaul. Illegal screen by Brundy. DePaul do a lot of screening for each other which is something that they'll have to do without Rod Strickland creating and Brundy got caught there moving uh, on that screen. Illinois State back with a basketball. Randy Blair the junior guard out of Peoria. Lost you with him. Jackson. This is Coleman working against Howard. Ball knocked loose by Brundy, but Pemberton to the sideline to retrieve it. Scarriage. A jumper for Blair. Got to go for three. Blair attempting his first three-pointer of the year. Puts it up and in, and Illinois State is up by five. I don't think he knew that was a three-pointer when he went up. I think he just came off the screen and felt good and went up. Neiman for three. Good. That so Brad Adam. Neiman answers the three-pointer. Brad, of course, very good from the three-point area. 417 so far this year. Broke a DePaul record in the Ohio State game. He'll really quiet the crowd with those times. Pemberton muscling to the bucket. Not going to go. Howard down with a rebound. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Howard and Pemberton. Well, Pemberton's a guy, big 6'9", 228, kind of cumbersome. But they're getting a lot out of him. 13 points and eight rebounds a game. Neiman for three. Not going to go this time. Ball loose and Scary up with it. 
Garage, the 6'5 sophomore. All knocked away by Green, but Scarriage retrieves it. Coleman with a jumper. That's going to go. Whistle underneath. Pemberton over Melvon Foster's back. Yep. DePaul's in a situation this year where Howard, being the biggest guy at 6'9", is going to have to send all five guys to the board to make sure they get that basketball. And that doesn't necessarily mean you can't run. So my theory is that you don't have to be extremely quick to run the ball up and down the floor. you just got to be well organized. Foster playing the point. This is Howard. He said this wasn't a, he said this wasn't a contest for him. Brundy and puts it up and in. Real nice pass. Howard drew two people. Brundy, very experienced, went right down the lane, got the easy layup. Good look and by the young man. At seven. 1607 left. And a whistle there against Terrence Green. Let's take a look at that last basket. There's Howard down low. See, he draws Pemberton, and then he also draws Blair, who was on Brundy, who had switched off, and Brundy in for the easy layup. Very nice look by Stephen Howard. Foul against Green, the second team foul against DePaul. Scary on the inbound, Jackson. Out front, Blair. Blair working against Foster. Takes him to the right side. Blair again out there. Jumper won't go down. Ball loose and a whistle this one against Illinois State. So we'll go the other way. Foul on Coleman. Second team foul against Illinois State. First against Coleman. And we have a timeout on the floor. 15-50 left. This game tied at seven. First half action back in a moment. Game tied at seven with 15-50 to play in the first half. Blue Demons with the basketball. And Melvon Foster off the inbound, starts back. Into the front court, Brundy. Illinois State applying some pressure to move the Paul's offense farther out on the floor. That's typical Bobby Knight in Indiana style where John Wall learned under Bobby's tutoring. This is Terrence Green. No place to go off to Foster. Foster. Corner of the key inside Howard, and he tries to put one up there left handed. Brundy Won't again. Go, but Brundy's there, and he puts it in. Stanley Brundy getting a lot off the glass tonight. That's two rebound shots and another easy cripple, and Stanley's got six. 9 7, Blue Demons on top. Blair problems along the sideline. Out front for Jackson across the court to Scary. Tries to move on Foster, and Foster fouled him. Foster trying to catch up with him, fouled him. And think, now James Hamby is going to report into the game for DePaul. I think uh, Joey is a little skeptical of Scarich's ability to handle the basketball. He's putting a lot of pressure on him. I'm not so sure that wasn't an offensive foul. Melvon Foster really down getting after it. And Scarich uh, a little, little elbow there late, but Foster may have been in early. Howard departs Hamby in. Scarich in the corner. Quit, quit. To the lane, off balance, and it goes in. It looked very pretty, but it counted. And that ties the game at nine. Baseline oh. intended for Brownie Lewis. Foster comes away with it, takes it inside, drops it off. Hamby has a shot, misses underneath. It's tipped through by Brundy, but we have a whistle. So the clock stops with the game tied at nine. Big James Hamby on the feed from Melvon Foster. Melvon got away with a little rap move there, a little foul. Hamby's got to learn to take this ball stronger to the basket. He's taking a little soft there. Of course, you know, they're going to foul the ball because the ball not shooting very well from the free throw line. In fact, it's really kind of ugly at 50 percent. So they're going to put him on the line when they got cripples like that and make him learn the two. Foul against Pemberton. His second heat departs and Scott Fowler reports into the game. Hamby at the line. And he misses the shot. Hamby, the 7 1 junior out of Elgin. He came into the game hitting 33% from the line and makes the second one. So the Blue Demons up by a point. They'll apply pressure. A little diamond in one zone press. Joey used this a lot last year. 
Blair to Scary. Scary down to Jackson. Off the rim and Green with a rebound. There was a case where Hamby's height came in very handy. Green off to Neiman. Popping for three. Not going to go. Brundy with a tip. And what a tip by Stanley Brundy to make it 12 9 to Paul. Now, Stanley, just a great athlete. Very active on the boards today. 14 10 to play. First half. Blair front court. Working against Foster. Jensen with his hands on the basketball to scary A three guard rotation by Illinois State. The ball knocked away by Brundy, picked up by Neiman. Into the front court. Brundy, look at that up and in. Neiman on the feed and Brundy with a bucket. Nice feed from Neiman and Brundy very active, very quick today. Seems to be all over the place, all over the floor, and really has taken a lot of the pizzazz out of this crowd. Here's Scary. Scary with three. And it's a 14-12 ball game. Brundy with 10 points, and Scary with a three-pointer. Again, makes it a two-point contest. That three-point line is just too close. Foster. Neiman comes over to help. Got to make it tougher to hit those three-pointers, Dwayne. Green. It's all relative, John. Green. No good off the front of the rim. Down to Jackson. Here's Scary. Ricky Jackson. The player left side. Stops to dart. Pulls up. Scary now. He tries to go low to Coleman. A jumper over Hamby. No good. And a rebound for Brundy. Brundy, instrumental here in the first part of the contest. We have 12.33 to go in the first half. Foster to Neiman. Henry springs out. Foster, ball knocked away, and a whistle and a foul coming against Jackson. Here comes David Booth into the ball game, replacing Brad Neiman. David on the thin side, but very quick and can really fill it up. David averaging 10.5 points a game, had a high game of 20 already as a as a freshman. And Joey is really, really high on this young fellow's offensive abilities. Sonny Robertson replacing Scott Fowler. Anton Hicks into the ball game for Illinois State as well. Foster. Hamby ball loose, scramble on the floor. Green has it knocked away. Loose on the sideline and a travel call coming here. Brundy got over there, tried to corral it, and they called travel on him in front of the Illinois State bench. So the Redbirds get the basketball down by two. And this is Hicks. Hicks in the game. The Blair. Inside Jackson. Ball rejected by Brundy. Hicks. Now Coleman with a jumper, not going to go. And a whistle here. And a foul called against Booth. Well, both Booth and Roberts went up for the ball kind of simultaneously, but usually the guy on the outside in this kind of situation, even though you go up even, look, the ball's kind of in the middle. The guy on the inside is going to get the break. The guy on the outside is going to get the foul. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a timeout on the floor with 12 minutes left to play in the first half. 14 12 to Paul back in a moment. Blue Demons have a two point edge, 14 12. Illinois State with a basketball and the inbound loaded out to Hicks. Pass left side, Blair. Coleman back to Blair out of the corner over Booth. Short right back to him. Blair. Blue Demons in a 2 3 zone as usual when somebody takes the ball out and eats their defensive basket. Off to Hicks. Blair again in that corner and he walked with a basketball. So he goes back to the ball. So far this afternoon, Illinois State 5 out of 12. The Demons 6 out of 12, a little bit better at 500%. Blue Demons 8 to 4 on the rebounding. Stanley Brendan very quick on the board. This is Terrence Green. Now Hamby. Foster. Here's Comfort. Up shot. Will not go on a whistle as the ball comes down to Hicks. A push against DePaul. So we'll 
Looks like the other way with 11 21 left in the half. Looks like it's on James Hamby. Now Terrence Green will depart. Hanley Brundy foul trouble the first two ball games, which to fall off. Especially the Ohio State game where if he'd have stayed in, I think they'd have had a real good chance to win that game. The ball stays in the 2 3 zone. Very Hicks. surprising. Now, player Hicks again off the corner of the key. Inside Roberts falls down. Gets rid of the ball. Now Hicks. They go to Blair again on the left side who comes across the top of the key. Coleman near the corner. They go to Hicks, the 5'9 freshman, a jumper by Jackson. Good for three. And that gives Illinois State a 15 14 edge. Jackson looks like he's going to hang around that three point area. The ball's going to have to get up in him and try to make him put the ball on the floor and make him do something going to the basket. Ooh. Right side, looking underneath, finds Brundy, but a three-second call nullifies the bucket. Brundy under there, put it up and in, but after the three-second violation. Well, Stanley hanging around in the paint a little bit too long. He probably was. That call did come a little bit late, though, because Stanley had already gone up and put it in, but Stanley was in there three seconds at least. Hicks crossing the timeline. On the right side, Jackson Hicks again, swinging to Blair. Hicks once more. Scott Fowler is in the ball game now for Illinois State. It's a Hicks out of the corner, going to be short. Jackson with a rebound. He'll jump it out of the corner. Good. Jackson thought about it, found himself open and put it in. Well, Hamby was right there with him, and you know that's an experience. Hamby's got to go out and pick him up. Even though it's not his man, you know, take him out from underneath the basket. He's got to go get him. He's got a shooter. Illinois State by three. Booth with the basketball working against Blair. Inside Hamby into the corner. This is Neiman. That'll tie it. Neiman out of the corner for three of 17 all with 9.33 to play. First half. Easiest way to get those three point shots is take that ball down low. Everybody collapses. Hamby out to Neiman. Boom. That's three. Hicks. Now Fowler, baseline left. The 6 5 freshman out of South Door, Chicago, puts it up and in. 19 17, Illinois State. Foster. And Neiman. Inside, Foster tries to go low, ball loose. Knocked away, and they say cut last by Brundy. Roberts in there to break it up. And Illinois State gets the basketball back. That's a tough call. Roberts had the ball. Brundy stuck his hand in. Roberts pulled the ball away to get away from Brundy, and I think threw it out of bounds. Maybe they thought Stanley fouled, and they were giving him the least of the two evils. Foster and Hamby gone. Blue Demons have Green, Brundy, Booth, Howard, and Neiman on the floor. Hicks. For Illinois State front court, the Scarich on the right side. This is Joey, going, Hicks. Joey going to a lot of combinations this year. Underneath Hicks and Crumble gets rid of the ball. This is Fowler out front, Scarich. Scarich against Booth. Booth from just down the road, Peoria Emanuel. Jackson now a jumper by Fowler, not going to go, and a whistle here. Howard underneath. And a whistle against Illinois State. I don't know why a guy does that. Uh, you know, Roberts is totally out of the play. Here's the jump shot on the side by Fowler. And, you know, Roberts doesn't have a chance with this, and he just beats Howard to death on the play, getting the foul. You're better off just backing off and letting him have the rebound instead of making a stupid foul. Each club with five team fouls. Grundy, top of the key. Howard. Green. All slap loose by Jackson Neiman. Howard, all the way, baseline, right good. Howard. Well, Neiman and Howard could play a little two-man game there and really have some fun this afternoon. Howard, pretty good post-up player, and if he doesn't get it, he can kick it back out to Neiman. Foul here against Terrence Green. Hicks working against Green, and that's the sixth team foul, the second foul against Terrence Green. We have eight minutes exactly to play here in the first half. The contest tied at 19. We have a timeout on the floor, and we'll return in a moment. The 
Game tied at 19 with eight minutes left to play in the first half. Illinois State with the basketball. It's a six. Five nine freshman guard. So we remain on the two to remain in the two three zone. That's what it's going to be much more effective. It's an outside shooting. Trying to go underneath for Fowler. Ball loose across the baseline belonging to the ball. Good hustle under there by Curtis Price. He saved that ball, knocked it off the knee. That's Scott Fowler, and uh, that gave the ball the ball. Good hustle. There's Green along the sideline, and now Whistle in this end of the court. Stops the clock at 7 33. A little friendly jostle down low between Price and Fowler again. Involved in the last two plays. Fowler's first foul. A little dance, you know, he's just kind of dance with him. Hang right on him. Down a wall, not overly happy with the call. This is Booth on the inbound. Baseline out front for Neiman. Ball oh, knocked loose by Hicks. There was a foul in the backboard, and Joey Myers up off the that was defense looking for a whistle there. Neiman front foot and a foul again, this time against Ricky Jackson. That's his second. And the seventh team foul now against Illinois State, so we'll go into the bonus situation. 7.23 to play in the half. You know, if I was a referee, that'd pay me double to work in a place like this. <laughs> Fans are too close to the floor. You don't look happy. And here's Terrence Green. They're really good. Cool. 39%. Yeah. 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 And he hits the first one. So he earns himself another shot. Blue Demon's up by one. 2019. A lot of people aren't Joey for not giving the team shoot better free throws, but as you see, Terrence looking into that sea of people, but I don't think a coach at the college level can do a whole heck of a lot. He can't alter it more than three or four percent either way. Roberts away with the ball to Hicks. Hicks, front court. Jackson. Now scary. Jackson. Out of the right side for three. Hits again, and it's 22-20. Ricky going through a lot of screens, taking young Price, and uh, the experienced freshman having trouble working through that. That's 12 for Jackson in this game. Ooh, pass the line off to Howard. Into the right corner, Neiman for three. Not going to go. Back up, Booth. That's going to drop. Nice little fake by Booth. There's three people up in the air. Follow stayed real cool. The young freshman looks good offensively. Booth ties the game at 22. A little change here. Looks like they're bringing the center up a little bit higher in the defense of the ball. It's like a 2 1 2. Hicks inside. Ball knocked away. Price knocking it away. Terrence Green. Green will jump it. Not going to go. Carries covers up. Tough shot. Really nothing there. Nobody in position to get a rebound, and T puts a quick one up. And here's Jackson jumping. Good. And a whistle and a foul. Count the bucket. The bucket's going to count the foul against the ball. Jackson will get credit for the bucket. And Curtis Price charged with his first personal. Again, not a fast break, but what we call a semi-fast break, where the defense is back, but they're just a little bit confused on where their man is. And again, Price could not find Jackson wide open, ran at him, and tried to run by him. But Jackson, real, real smart, uh, junior, shot the ball, kind of leaned into him, threw the foul after he let the ball go, and he'll go to the line for one to try to make this a three-point shot. Jackson coming into the game seven out of eight from the line this year. Illinois State by two. And Jackson makes it three. He has 15 for the afternoon. His high this year, 20. He's hit that mark twice. 5.53 left to go. Jackie Murphy is into the ball game now for DePaul. Murphy, now Neiman for two. That's good. Neiman's one of those guys that never looks nervous, always looks cool. 
really a good shooter, and he's really come a long way since last year. 25-24, ball tipped, goes out of bounds. It's going to belong to Illinois State. Jerry changing defenses again, a 1-2-2 zone. Chucky Murphy out top. Neiman and Green on the wings. Now he's going to change again back to a 2-3. Joey trying to confuse Illinois State's offense by changing defenses often. Player off the inbound. The Scarich. A little trap in this 2-3. Murphy and Brundy out there, and they cough it up. Murphy to Brundy on the dunk. So they force the mistake, and the ball is out in front by 126-25. Joey back to the 1-2-2 now. Going to try to get some pizzazz out of his club through the defense. This one a trap, too, it looks like. He clears it across the court. Scary, scary catch for two. Well, the one thing you want to do in any zone defense, whether it be press or normal, is rotate that ball to a weak side. That's what they did. DePaul could not recover quickly enough. And the train leads oh. on the other. He misses, but Howard is right there. Stephen Howard, the 6'9 freshman. Blue Demons by one, 28-27. Stanley will tell him that's a pass at half. <laughs> that was a pass. It wasn't a shot. This is Blair. And Jackson. Ricky Jackson. Now Coleman. And he gets it to drop. That's where any pressure defense is weak is in the middle. You get that ball in the middle and you extend yourself. You're in serious trouble. Easy jump shot there. Lucky Murphy. He'll jump it. Not going to go. Roberts with a rebound for Illinois State. Now to Blair. Crossing the timeline. Turned around. Coleman. Not going to go. Green. Aaron Green back. Green back for Illinois State. Bounce pass underneath. Brundy to the bucket up and in. Brundy. Seven out of seven from the, flea, from the field here this afternoon. Brundy with 14. Nice feed from T. Green. Brundy screened off his man. Put the hand out on the baseline. T with the pass right there. Randy Blair for Illinois State. Roberts in the corner. DePaul very aggressive defensively right now. Blair. Down the lane. Up and in. Blair working the left side. 31-30 Illinois State. Is that last DePaul basket? Notice the way there. Brundy screens his man off. Puts that hand out. T leads that pass right to the baseline. Howard has to get it. A little more than three minutes left to play, and here's a steal. Player, Howard trying to cut him off, and he knocks it away in a travel call. A great defensive effort by Howard, and then he walked with the basketball. We have 2.58 left to play in the first half. An official timeout, 31-30. Illinois State back in a moment. Two fifty-eight left to play in the first half. Blue Demons down by one, 31-30, Illinois State. Ricky Jackson with 15 for the Redbirds. Stanley Brundy, 14 for DePaul. Hicks off the inbound. This is Alvin Flores just into the game, missing a jumper. Terrence Green, front court down the right side. Now to Murphy. Murphy working against Hicks. Side. This one intended for Brundy, broken up by Coleman, loose along the baseline, and a whistle and a foul coming against the ball. So it stops the clock at 2.35. That foul on Brundy, that'll put Illinois State in a one and one I, I might take Brundy out right now with two fouls. He has a tendency to get that third foul in the first half, 2.35 to go. I might get him out of the ball game. I, don't, I, don't wanna, I wouldn't want to see Stanley if I was Joey Meyer with my third foul first half. Well, Murphy leaves and Foster reports back in. Hicks goes to the line looking at a one and one. It's nothing out of one at the line this year. And he's going for two. Howard away with it. 2.30 left to play in the first half. Terrence Green. Now Foster. Foster. Up and it's foul. Hicks, the little 5'9 freshman in on the mix that time. That's Melvon, his second. Melvon Foster passes After up his shot again. Brundy with excellent position on Coleman. Gets a nice feed from Foster. And 
Coleman has nothing to do but let Grundy shoot the layup for foul. And if you're an opponent of Paul, you foul him, put him on the line. Grundy very weak from the free throw line. Jackson and Scarriage back in. Hicks and Flores depart for Illinois State. Paulie Grundy looking at two this time around. 2.24 to play. And a 31% from the line. And he will not get this one to drop. Blue Demons coming into this game hitting just over 50% from the line this year. And it's been discussed often. We can't expect to win there in a close game. They can't hit him from the line. It's tough. He misses them both. And this is Fowler down with the ball. Now to Blair. Scarriage front court. Underneath. Intended for Coleman. Knocked away. Big break for DePaul right there. Brundy could have easily been called for a foul. That would have been his third. Here, let's take a look at it. Brundy, boom. Definitely a foul, and DePaul gets a big break. I'd, I'd still get Brundy out of there. Scarriage trapped in the corner out to Coleman. Jackson, Scarriage in the right corner underneath. There's Fowler out to Blair. Blair puts it in and out. The ball loose along the baseline, out of bounds, belonging to Illinois State with just under two minutes to play in the first half. Joey upset, but on a road, especially in a building like this, you're not going to get many of those. Out front. Jackson, Scarriage, Scarriage at the line, bounce pass right side, Blair fills it up, 33-30, Illinois State, Illinois State, State 40 left. Rotates the ball very nicely on the zone, he caught Brundy running at him, and Blair stuck that jumper. Neiman for three, Tough well shot. not go. the ball down to Coleman, less than a minute and a half to play in the half. Neiman comes off that pick, getting the ball coming away from the basket. Blair underneath loses it, picked up by Scarry, looking one way, feeds the other, and a whistle and a foul against Terrence Green. That's going to be three on Terrence Green. Coleman fouled underneath. Now Green will leave and Booth moves in. Nice pass from Scarry all the way across court. Looked like key on a reach. And despite whether you foul him or not, if it looks like a reach, the referee's going to call a foul nine times out of ten. Tony Roberts off the Illinois State bench. They also have Derek Stokes up. Now Stokes will into the game, replacing Ricky Jackson here with a minute 18 left. Here comes Curtis Price in to replace Brundy. So Brundy leaves now with two after Terrence Green picked up his third. Joey living that fine line. Looks like Brindy could have had a foul, and then even on that block, may have come pretty close. Coleman, a 71% shooter from the line this year, hits for the first time today. 34-30, Illinois State. And it converts them both. Illinois State by five. Now Roberts into the game, replacing Coleman. Well, this is a tough part for the young Blue Demon. A minute to go, and this crowd's really into it. Got to show some composure here. Howard inside. Foster. Foster tries to force it, and it's foul. Foster in heavy traffic, fouled by Scott Fowler. That's his second. Clock stops with a minute three left. Foster coming across the middle. Looked like Blair had him in trouble and most of the time you just keep your hand up and and don't bring it down and try to block the shot you won't get the foul call a lot of times you can get a block but if you come across the body like that the ref is going to call a foul and foster puts it up and in foster only a first 55 percent free throw shooter you think those guards should all be up in the 80 percent and Jackson down with the ball. Illinois State starting back under a minute to play in the half. Sam Scarriage. Jackson against Booth. Blair. Jackson. Illinois State setting a lot of nice screens. This is Fowler. 
Fowler wanting to go over Price does misses ball down to Price now Booth 33 seconds left first half Blue Demons down by four with a basketball young freshman very intelligently drew the ball back out knowing Joey wanted to go for one shot they'll draw it out let's see what they get Foster out there we're down to 17 seconds left on the first half clock that's too quick to go now Foster baseline Booth looking for a foul the ball knocked away and out of bounds with 11 seconds left oh, that was way too quick you want to draw that clock down to about eight seven seconds maybe go into a play get a quick shot just a chance for a rebound nothing else Stokes in Jackson out Booth baseline looking bounce pass he has Howard baseline tries to go inside and a charge a charge against the 6'9 freshman Howard with eight seconds left on the clock that's his first eight seconds left on the first half clock and Illinois State will get the basketball back leading by four a little inexperience showing there it's you want to wait that was again too soon Jackson across the timeline left side he'll pop for three partially blocked Howard down with the ball as the buzzer sounds ending the first half of play through the first 20 minutes from Horton Fieldhouse on the campus of Illinois State the Illinois State Redbirds leading the DePaul Blue Demons 35 to 31 a wild first half we'll be back with coach Joe Meyer after this message Ben Galt this is Dwayne stats for this first half it's really been something the Blue Demons have not been consistent in the first half. Stanley Brundy has been a big force for them. Ricky Jackson, as we thought, big for Illinois State. Now, it looks like really nobody wants to take control of the game. Early in the game, though, Brundy was very, very active, got to the ball, got a lot of tip-ins. You know, Brundy did a, a real nice job filling the lane here. As you see, Howard getting the good pass, the young man. He really looks good out there. Howard, very active. Here's Brundy again, positioning himself on the rebound. You know, you don't have to be big and strong to get rebounds. You got to have good timing, be quick. Stanley's that way. There's a shot by Neiman out on the side from the three-point range. Again, Stanley, boom, that quick explosion up to the basket for the tip-in. And here's Neiman finding him on a semi-fast break. Not a lob stuff, but still got the same thing done. Here's Howard, the young freshman. Gets the ball, gets nice positioning down there. That's Brundy, throws it up. Brundy, here comes Howard over. Now, Stanley... Stanley will tell him that was a pass, you know, during the halftime or after the game, but that was a nice follow by Howard. Stanley drew the two people, boom, Howard's right there. So at the half, Brundy with 15 points, 14 points unofficially. Ricky Jackson has 15. The DePaul Blue Demons trailing Illinois State by four. We'll be back in a moment to take a look at first half stats, and we have a special award coming up. All of that following this. Today's holiday wishes can come true with the hardware gift circuiter from True Value Hardware Stores, where you'll find toolbox essentials like the Master Mechanic 17-piece, one-quarter inch drive standard socket set for only $8.88. This service three-piece solid joint plier set is just $9.49. And this Master Mechanic precision ground three-piece wood chisel set is only $9.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Hi, Dave. Part of our mouse is still at the house. The ears. Yeah, in the kitchen. Will you bring them? Great. Yeah. Here I come to save the place. Dad. 
When you're out, call in on an Illinois Bell public phone. First half score at 35-31, Illinois State leading the DePaul Blue Demons. As promised, a special award this year is part of the DePaul telecast. We will have the Crash Mingelt Hustle Award. It's an award presented every WGN televised DePaul basketball game to the Blue Demon, whose overall hustle or single individual effort helps considerably to determine the outcome of that day or night's game. Crash will contribute $100 each game to the Marge Meyer Scholarship Fund in the name of the Blue Demon chosen for this award. You've come a long way, baby. You have an award named after you. What are the qualifications now to earn this distinguished honor? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how distinguished it is. I, I felt, Dwayne, that I had to give a little bit back, you know, to, to basketball, and basketball's been very good to me, and I almost feel part of the uh, Blue Demon uh, family now, but some of the ways to get nominated, I guess, you know, you, you gotta really get some floor burns, you know what I mean? And and you gotta have at least three or four three or four floor burns to get involved in that. And I think the second one's kind of the one I like the most, the, the excessive blood stains on the uniform. And that you gotta disregard that like if you're wearing a blue uniform, because you really can't tell, you know, how much blood you got, so they don't really have to be excessive. And then the third one, uh, you know, I diving over the scores mesh. Now you can't dive on it, yeah, that's easy. Anybody can do that. Over it without messing up the scoreboard. Okay, now that's tough to do because then you mow down all the guys on. <laughs> now this fourth one, I know you really like, oh. okay? Now that's ending, I up, for this one. ending up in the lap of a cheerleader. And I did that quite often uh, in the chagrin of, of my wife, Linda. But you know what, that's within the game only. All right, that's, that doesn't that's count the after the game, no. That doesn't count the parking lot or anything like that. Now, the panel is really distinguished, okay? <laughs> Here we, we got go. Tony Giannetti. Now, she really, we have to have a women's look in this because she's got to really tell whether the scars on the legs and stuff are really legitimate and if they really mess up a guy's knees. Mike McCormick, the trainer now, you know, he's got to legitimize the blood. You know what I mean? I mean, it can't be just fake and stuff like that. It's got to be, you know, real blood and real hurts and all that. And, of course, you, you're on there. You know, you, you can call him, you know. All right. And you can cheat, see, because you can make a hustle look really more than it's worth. So you, you, we got to make sure that if you cheated during the game, that you kind of back off, you know, during the during the real show. And of course, you have to be among the uh, distinguished uh, yeah, panel. I, I got enough floor burns. I kept Johnson and Johnson in business. They ought, to, they ought to send me stock. And then, of course, there's Arnie Harris. He's the tiebreaker. See, right. see, Arnie's got all the replays back there, and he can look back and make sure that it wasn't a fake hustle. You know, they're fake hustles. See, you know, like the guy will dive after a ball, and it, it won't make any difference. It's already like three rows up in the stands and stuff. That doesn't count. It's got to be a true hustle. And the decision of the judges is final. It's final. <laughs> and you know the, the the thing it is it, it is a you know scholarship fund and it is for the university and I you know I think it's really neat that we can do something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's great because we can have fun with it and we can uh, raise some money for the Marge Meyer Scholarship Fund as well. We're looking forward to that all season long. Let's take a look at the first half stats with the Blue Demons trailing by four at the half in the field goal department. Uh, DePaul actually shooting a little better from the floor. 52% to 47%, but look at the free throw line. Well, you know, one of the things about the free throw line is, is, is that when you shoot real poorly, you don't want to go to the line. I remember Wilt Chamberlain, he hated to go to the line. And that kind of affects your offense. You know, that may that may have Stanley Brundy like not go to the basket when he really should, or T. Green not go to the basket. And that's important. You got to hit those free throws because it'll allow you to go to the basket more. And from the uh, three-point range, this uh, Illinois State Club hitting four out of six from three-point territory to account for 12 of their first half points. Coming into this game, they were hitting 37%. DePaul, 37% from three-point territory. We mentioned uh, just briefly at the outset of the uh, telecast the inexperience of these two clubs, and I think as a result of that, we will see from game to game a different DePaul club. We could see a different DePaul team from half to half. Oh, I think we did the other night in the main game. They had no offense in the second half. I think Joey's going to have to really stay attuned a little bit more to coaching. You know, last year and years before, I think he got used to kind of rotating players at a certain time. He's going to have to watch the game very closely, find out who's giving him the most, what combination is the most effective, and go with that combination. Terrence Green inbounding to Melvon Foster, and the second half is underway. Foster to the top of the key. Neiman, Brundy, and Howard rounding out the five for the ball. Foster back out to Neiman. Terrence Green, Blue Demons moving the basketball here in the opening seconds of the second half. Foster 
across the left side now. Howard from the line jumps it good. Stephen Howard, the freshman for the pair to make it 35 33. Randy Blair starts back for Illinois State. It's going to be tough, Howard, if he can hit that shot consistently. He'll draw that man up on him and be able to take it to the basket, too. Scourge to Pemberton. Pemberton working inside, and we have a travel call. They have Jackson and Coleman to round out the five on the floor for Illinois State here to start the second half. Take a look at both coaches there working the officials. Trying to set him up for that next call. Donawal, really. Foster has the ball knocked away. Player now loose and picked up by Brundy. Brundy to Howard off the top of the key. Now to Neiman. A two-point ball game. Illinois State on top. Early in the second half. Neiman working against Carriage along the right side. Foster loses it. Now it's loose on the floor and a jump ball. A hell ball, and on the exchange, it will go to Illinois State. Ricky Jackson covering up for Illinois State. Well, twice in a row there, Melvin Foster a little careless with the basketball. One on a pass he got away with. Bundy recovered that one. They lost. Got to be real careful. Blair. That's scary. Out of Blair. This is Jackson cutting inside. Scary on that left side. Coleman against Howard. Pemberton. Out to Blair, and we have a whistle here away from the ball. Neiman whistled for the foul. Neiman and Jackson. A little contact. First foul against Brad Neiman. Tough matchup for Neiman. Neiman about 6'3, 170 pounds, and Jackson 6'5, 210. Gonna take him down low and post him up. Brad saw himself probably getting beat there and just kind of grabbed Jackson to. Not allowing that easy basket. David Booth in. Melvon Foster out. Scarich on the inbound out front to Blair. 2-3 zone for DePaul. Scarich out of the corner. Not going to go. Coleman up with the tip. Gerard Coleman. The 6-7 junior with a bucket. 37-33. Illinois State. A little over 18 minutes to play in the contest. Neiman now to Howard. Terrence Green. He'll pop for two. Good. Good movement by DePaul that time. And that's his first field goal of the ball game. Three points on the afternoon for Terrence Green. 37-35, Illinois State. Jackson, Blair, Coleman. He'll jump it from 15. Will not get the roll. And Terrence Green down with the ball. The end of the front court. Green cutting. Right side, Neiman, low, Brundy oh. to the basket, not going to go, Coleman, back to Blair, two men back for the ball, Blair front court, Pemberton, whoops, to the bucket off the left side, up and in, John Pemberton, the 6'9", junior, with his first bucket. Well, that proves you don't have to be quick, good semi-fast break, they got the ball up to Pemberton real quickly, Howard didn't recover. Neiman right sideline, cross the court to David Booth. This is Howard inside underneath from the up. It's going to go and a whistle and a foul. The whistle against Coleman. That's his third. Boy, count the bucket. Stephen Howard, good looking athlete, goes up for the shot. Boom, nice pass to Brundy down low. That's the third time he's done that this ball game. Stephen Howard really, you can give him two and a half of these three points if Brundy hits the foul shot. Nice feed from Howard. Brundy has 16 at the line. Hits number 17, and that equals his season's high. 39-38. DePaul down by one, putting on pressure. Illinois State defeats it. Jackson Scarich off the glass and in. Sam Scarich with the layup. Well, at diamond and one is a lot of pressure, but if they break it, look out. It's a three-on-one. Neiman inside green. Ball slapped loose. A pile on the floor. This is Pemberton down and up and in. Big John Pemberton out of the pack with the bucket. 43-38, Illinois State. 16-24 to play. It was a runner race train, wasn't it? Boy, boy. Neiman, baseline, oh, and good tries move. to put it up and is foul. Good move. Well, he's beyond his years, Neiman. Senses the crowd getting in the ball game. Knows Illinois State's going to be very aggressive. And he takes the ball to the basket to draw the foul. Take this crowd right out of it. 
Here's Pemberton breaking away. That's a breakaway. And Druck there at 6'9", 230. Fourth foul on Coleman who leaves. Two shots for Brad Keeman. And Scott Fowler replaces him. So at the 16-14 mark, Coleman has picked up his fourth foul. Neiman at the line. And he misses the first one. Well, when Neiman struggles at the line, you know you're struggling as a team. Sometimes it's contagious, you know, it really is. There's a kid, what, he hit over 100 in a row in high school in a row, and, you know, he's even struggling a little bit. And a foul against Booth off the inbound. 43-39 the score, second foul on Booth. I'm not sure about that one. Looked like it was a good trap down there. Booth did not reach, had hands up in the air. The ball continues to pressure. And, the and Brundy runs. steals it. Brundy to Green, a fake over Pemberton, up and in. Terrence Green makes it a two-point game. Against pressure, Jackson in the backcourt. Scary has it knocked away and stolen by Booth, a jumper. Good to tie it. Booth ties the game at 16, 43-43. There's the defense creating the offense. We talked about Joey at halftime, how well last year's team did that. There's Scary. Inside Pemberton. Back out to Blair. Scary. They try the left side, and Pemberton powers the baseline. Good back screen that time by Randy Blair. That causes the guard to switch off on Pemberton. He really doesn't want to switch because he wants to stay with his man. It would be a mismatch. Pemberton gets the step for the easy layup. Illinois State by two. Terrence Green. Now Brundy. Booth. Swings back right side. Puts it up. Won't go. Big rebound by Brundy to keep it in the DePaul front court. Neiman. Right side, a little over 15 to play. He finds Brundy off the glass and in. Nice speed and Brundy with a bucket. 45-45. Blair to Scary. Scary's looking low. Pemberton, and we have a whistle. Howard and Pemberton. A foul against Howard. You know, where you're a freshman, you got to kind of get a feel for what's a foul and not a foul in college basketball how to play each individual ball game and official. And Howard will do that after a while. He's a good athlete. He'll get used to it. 14 47 to play. 45 45 tie. Time out on the floor. Back after this. Forty-five forty-five with 14 47 left to play. The Blue Demons trail by four at the half. Illinois State with the basketball. Player on the inbound and Jackson. Curtis Price on the floor now for the DePaul ball club. Roberts. Roberts hit inside. That'll stop it at 14-36. DePaul in a trap defense. Got him in just a little bit of trouble when they got that ball again into the middle. Second team foul, second foul against Curtis Price and the fourth team foul against DePaul. Sonny Roberts goes to the line. And he converts it. So Illinois State up by one. They have Jackson, Pemberton, Roberts, Scarriage, and Blair on the floor for Illinois State. Booth, Brundy, Green, Neiman, and Price for the ball. And Roberts converts them both. The ball strikes back down by two. Neiman handling the basketball. Left side, corner against Terry. Baseline by Price. Off the glass, that's going to go Booth away with the ball. Knocked loose, recovers in heavy traffic, and a whistle here and a foul coming. Joey Meyer was beside himself looking for the whistle, and he finally got it. Well, he thought Price got fouled on the shot, which looks like he did get hammered, but sometimes you almost got to cause the refs to look at you, and that's really what Booth did here. He started swinging a little bit because he felt he was being fouled, and 
Sometimes you need that to let the refs take a look at you. Player charged with a foul, and another foul coming again against Player. So Player with two quick fouls. He has two on the afternoon. I think that should be a one and bonus penalty shot. Let me tell you why. Green was wide open going to the basket. The ball was not in play. It was a dead ball foul. I think you ought to change that rule and make that a shooting foul. And now David Booth is claiming that he had the ball slapped. A five-second call, and the officials are going to confer. Booth claiming that the ball was slapped before he could get rid of it. Now he's going to look around. Let's take a look at it. Should have been a technical foul if it was. Let's take a look. Well, that was a little bit after it right there. We're going to get it back a little bit farther. Here you take a look. Yes, it was. It was yes, slapped. the ball was slapped. Should have been a technical foul. Instead, it's a turnover against DePaul. The 10th turnover against the Blue Demons. Arnie Harris on the hustle all day. Scarriage out of Blair. Off to Scarriage. And we have a whistle here and a foul coming against Pooh. That's his third. Joey Meyer has got to be very careful, as he always has been, and not getting too out of control because that sometimes will go to your players. And with young players, they tend to pick up a coach's vibe. So Joey's got to be very careful and not allowing that to happen. Scarriage finds Roberts. Roberts open dunks the ball. 49-45. Very good execution. Joey may want to call timeout here. Neiman into the front court. Here's Price. He'll jump it. Going to be short. The ball loose, but Neiman comes up with it. Tries to go low. Brundy ball kicked out of bounds, belonging to DePaul. Reset the shot clock here on the kick. 13-36 left to go, and we have a timeout on the floor. With the score, 49-45 Illinois State. We'll be back in a moment. Be sure to tune in this coming Friday at 7 o'clock for Holy Cow, a tribute to Harry. That's Friday here on Channel 9. Heck of a ball game going on here at Illinois State. Blue Demons down by four with 13.30 to play. Neiman to Booth. Booth baseline right. Up it will not go, but a whistle and a foul. This one coming against Roberts. Nice cool move by Booth on the baseline. Fakes, drives, got a real tough shot, goes up, and Sonny Roberts bails him out a little bit, drawing a foul. There you see it. Booth on a slithering move down the baseline, and he'll get two. Booth, a real good shooter. Hitting 80% on the year coming into this game, and he converts the first one. 49-46. Six, seven freshman out of Peoria. Ohio State fills it up again. 49-47. They're calling the diamond in one press. That's a 1-2-1. One, one. Blair to Jackson. Price back. Jackson back to Blair. And now the zone into man to man. Tempered in underneath. Robert Scott rejected by Price. And out of bounds belonging to Illinois State. You can't say anything else. Good young athletes on the ball. Rice and Neiman leave. Foster and Murphy report back in. Don't tell me quickness can't make up defensively. Price beaten badly on that play. He comes all the way across the lane for the block. Scarriage out to Blair. Randy Blair. Scarriage. That corner Blair jumps it. That'll be short. The ball loose in the lane. This is Booth away with it. Out of Murphy. Green into the front court. Green across the court. Booth. Starts to move on Blair, and we have a whistle. Stops the clock at 12.40. Looks That's like Booth says, hey, I'm, I'm just going to take his ball one-on-one. -on -one. I'm four or five inches taller than this guy. I'm going to go shoot over that's the third foul against player. Yeah, but the most important thing is it's the seventh team foul or sixth team foul. It's six, I believe. Sixth team foul. One more, and DePaul will be in the bonus. Now Blair will depart 
the 6-3 junior leaves in favor of the 5-9 freshman Anton Hicks. Booth on the inbound to Terrence Green. Green baseline against Skerich out front, Chucky Murphy. Murphy, the freshman guard. The Booth. Booth Howard. Underneath Brundy to the glass. Good. Stanley Brundy now with 21. Howard just gets that ball, big power, looks down. Brundy gets good position, and it's two. Skerich. Ball knocked away by Booth. Booth has shown signs of great quickness and some good defensive work. There's Brundy getting real good position. Look, he gets there, has the whole lane wide open. Nice pass from Howard, easy lay-in. Scary. Oh, a hook by Pemberton. They lost it in mid-form, and the ball goes out of bounds. They say that Brundy touched it last. How about that? I don't. You know what? I think the ref got. I think the ref could not believe the shot. Got so caught up in that, and there was no way. That was a throw to the basket. Scarriage underneath to Hicks. I think y'all just missed that call. Scarriage with three, not going to go. Terrence Green rebounding. Green, front court. Oh, a pass and heavy traffic to Brundy and a whistle. Pemberton charge with the foul. That's going to be three on John Pemberton. Here's the hook shot play. Now, the ball was up. See, it's an never touched the ball. He touched it down low way before he got up to the hook. They just threw it behind the basket. I think they all got fooled on that one. I think right now the referees have a lot of players talking about fouls, a lot of coaches talking about fouls. They got to really take control of this ball game, quiet everybody down, and, and gain a little bit of composure themselves. And Brundy steps to the line to hit one, putting DePaul up by one. Might need a technical on somebody, just anybody to quiet the thing down a little bit. 50 49. Brundy misses this one. Inside, Jackson away with the ball. Now Hicks. This is Roberts. Carriage. First lead for DePaul since the 3 22 mark in the first half. Temperton. A jumper by Hicks. Won't go. Oh, Jackson back up and in. Ricky, Ricky Jackson. Jackson. Oh. He's big enough to go down low. He got a he got six, five, six rebounds a game last year and a nice follow shot there. Good body control. 51-50. Illinois State. Now Brad Neiman reports back into the game, replacing Terrence Green. We're at the 11-20 mark. Here's another look. Here's the shot in the corner. Comes off the glass, Ricky Jackson right here. Really nice body control. He gets the ball in his hand, just like a shot, a jumper. Neiman front court for the ball. Booth. It will not go. Roberts rebounding. Scarriage back the other way. Good shot by Booth, though, in his rhythm. He has to take that shot. Can't get discouraged because he missed one. This is Hicks, the freshman. The Scarriage. Pemberton against Brundy. Ball contested and scary up with it. Here's Jackson jumping. That's going to go, but Pemberton, a clear bucket. Pemberton has eight all coming in the second half. 53 50 Illinois State. Here's Murphy off to Neiman and a whistle. Stopping the clock at 10 25. Must have got Neiman for pushing off when he came off the screen. It's about the only foul he could get coming off that. Neiman not arguing. He must have been guilty. Now Pemberton leaves. Fowler back in. Scarriage will depart and Blair back for Illinois State. Jackson will inbound. The ball down by three. Jackson against pressure in the backcourt to Hicks. They have a three on one. Hicks right side. Roberts a fake Howard up and it's good. And a whistle and a foul. Count the bucket to make it a five point spread. 55 50. Here it is. Go 
Oh, and foul. One fast break, and once you break the initial pressure on that press, it's a three-on-one. 10-14 left, timeout, 55-50, Illinois State back after this. It's a five-point ball game. Illinois State out in front. 10-14 left to play. Blue Demons with two timeouts left. For Illinois shot. State with four left. Well, you can't get real upset at this point if you're DePaul, and a young team may have a tendency to do that. A lot of time left. Ten minutes to go in the half. You really don't have to panic at this point. Lane violation. A lane violation. Roberts. No, Roberts will get another attempt. Kind of put a little fake on everybody there, didn't he? Act like he was going to shoot and then pull it back. He puts it up and in. The biggest lead of the afternoon for Illinois State. 56-50. Murphy. Chucky Murphy back for the Blue Demons. Right side. Howard. Ball knocked away out of bounds belonging to DePaul. Blue Demons down by four at the half. Illinois State now up by six. The foul, by the way, on Booth was his fourth, and he is on the DePaul bench. Howard to Neiman. Neiman Green, Howard, Brundy, and Murphy in the game for DePaul. DePaul a little bit confused offensively right now. And a whistle in the meantime. A foul against Fowler. That will be his third. Fowler kind of bails him out, gives him a one-on-one. -on -one. Not a very smart foul when you got good momentum, six-point lead, and Stephen Howard will go to the free throw line. Howard coming into the contest, 57% from the line, averaging nine points a game. And this one will not drop for him. Out of bounds, belonging to DePaul to call. Good hustle by Brundy to get inside there and at least get a hand on the ball. Terrence Green looking for Brundy who was pushed away. The ball loose and a whistle and a foul against Brundy. Good call. That whole Brundy problem. charged with his third. Yeah, that was, that was, the whole problem was caused there by really DePaul not running a good out of bounds play. They didn't set good picks. Nobody was open. The ball had to be forced in. Illinois State got their hand on it and boom, you got a foul. We go to the other end of the court. So the bonus applies at both ends. 9.41 in the ball game. And Ricky Jackson at the line. Jackson has 17 right now as he steps to the line. He makes it 18. Of course, he's the wrong guy to foul. He's a legitimate 85 to 90% free throw shooter. And right now, for the first time, one of these clubs, Illinois State, is taking control of this ball game. Jackson with another one coming. It will not go, and Brundy with the board. Murphy starts back. Blue Demons facing their biggest deficit of the afternoon. They are down by seven. Howard tries to go to Brundy, but it's knocked away. Roberts now heads inside. The player not going to go. And a whistle and a foul. This one against Jackson. Jackson came flying through. That's his third. Not, a, not the greatest shot in the world to take by Blair when you're up this many points. Got somebody on the ropes who really want to run some offense, get good position so those kinds of things don't happen. Ricky Jackson gains his third foul. That's really not too big a problem right now with nine minutes to go. A fourth one could put him in a little bit of trouble. Green to the line. Well, 39% on the year. David Booth's back in the game now, replacing Murphy. And Kevin Holland gets set to report in to replace Howard. Holland has had the bad back. They finally zeroed in on a problem in regard to his back, and he will be able to play with medication. Terrence Green converts it from the line. So, so Kevin Holland in the game. Interesting substitution. I mean, his back must be okay. Having a few back problems myself, if you get over there and get cold like that, it really gets tough to loosen it up. He was having back spasms. Holland into the game. And a delayed call. Oh, no. Jackson 
fell down, lost the ball, and a whistle and a foul coming here. And boy, this one's going to be a big one. How about that? Well, it, it might have been a foul. It's tough to see here as he did step on the back of his foot a little bit. But look how long before he makes the call. Now, it's either a foul right now, right trip him right there. See, it's either a foul right when it happens or it's not a foul. He did trip him. The ball went out of bounds. Probably a good call just a little late. Fourth foul against Stanley Brundy. It comes at the 9-12 mark. And at the line, Ricky Jackson. And he converts it. The real, the real question is, what was Stanley doing around there at that time? The ball's already on its way up the floor. He really doesn't have a legitimate chance of getting the ball back. He should just clear out, get down, and not get a nitpick foul like that. Jackson with 19 points. Makes it 20. 59-51. Illinois State. Neiman. Brad Neiman front court. Working against Hicks. And Neiman loses the ball out of bounds in front of the DePaul bench. A turnover. That's number 14 charged to DePaul. Neiman, as he said at the preseason show, doesn't, doesn't really comfortable playing that point guard spot. He's having to do that. He'll have to make some adjustments. Everybody has to make a few sacrifices when you don't have an ingredient you need. And a whistle away from the ball. The call coming against DePaul. Against Kevin Holland. That's his first. 8.51 left to play. And it will send Scott Fowler to the line. Blue Demons down by eight. Fowler. 6'5 freshman out of South Shore. He has three on the afternoon. It's a nine point spread now. Pretty tough to overcome with a young ball club and in, a, in an arena like this. DePaul digging himself a little bit of a hole. Stokes makes it an even 10, 61 51, with 8.51 to play. Terrence Green, boy, the crowd's really into this now. Neiman. Neiman, cross to the right side with a pass to Booth. Booth to Green, and he is pushed. Green pushed by Ricky Jackson, and that's going to be his fourth foul. That is significant. Well, it is. It would be even more significant if the game was a little closer because they would really need his offense right now with a 10-point lead. I think the Ocean would be protected and not getting any reach-in fouls like that, not trying to overplay too aggressive. Green to the line again. A very poor free throw shooter might not be a big problem. Neiman out, Foster in. Jackson will depart, and Sam Skerridge reports back in for Illinois State. Terrence Green with six on the afternoon. Sellout crowd of 7,725. Last game here in Horton Field now. That's up and in. Eight now for Terrence Green. An eight-point spread here. Illinois State leading. Scarridge crossing the timeline to Roberts. Roberts throws it away. Brundy up for the basketball. Now to Green. Big possession here for DePaul. Booth, he'll jump it. Good! David Booth, the freshman with a bucket. 61-55. Hicks. Short of the timeline. Ball tipped Green up with it. He's going to take it to the bucket, and he lays it up and in. 61-57. Green in double figures with 10. Blue Demons trying to surge back. Scarich to Roberts. Roberts, bounce pass Hicks into the front court. Shadowed by Foster. Roberts, out to Hicks. Blair, a jumper, not going to go for three. Roberts to the bucket. Ball knocked away. Booth up with it. Booth off to Foster. Now Terrence Green. So a big swing here in the last minute. Big swing to the air out of the crowd. Green. Ah, oh, tough shot. Puts it up and in. Oh. From 15, and it's a two-point game. 
61 59. Oh, well, ends well. That was a real tough shot. Hicks fakes now off to the right side. Fowler with a jumper. Good. The freshman had a big jumper for Illinois State. He has oh, six. It's okay. Joey Meyer back in the ball game. It's a new ball game. Just a four point game. Plenty of time left. Foster, Terrence Green. Green at the line, forces one up. It's going to go. Terrence Green count the bucket and a foul against Hicks. That's his first foul and count the bucket. There's where leadership comes in again. A real tough shot. Terrence Green just taking control. Two dribbles and up and draws a foul. And he's got a shot for a three-point play. All of a sudden, he has 14 points for the afternoon. Roberts leaves and Pemberton, John Pemberton, the 6'9 junior reports back into the game for Illinois State. And Green goes to the line for one. Oh, Dwayne, as you so candidly put it in the first half, you're, you're going to see a different DePaul team uh, night to night and in the same night. And that's really what's happened. I think they've changed three or four times already here tonight. Green converts it. It's a one-point game, 63-62. Now into Hicks. Hicks, front court, down the lane. Fakes puts it up, not going to go, but a whistle. That's going to stop the clock at 646. The foul against Kevin Holland. Real tough, situ second. Real tough situation for Kevin. Haven't really played in game situation in a long time. Having to come in a tough ball game. A little fake come across. Kevin didn't go for it, but he did foul and come across the body. And Hicks will go to the line to shoot two. Hicks out of Chicago, St. Rita. And this is the first one. We talk about DePaul's young people, and Hicks is a freshman. So Illinois State, without a senior, there are four juniors that play a lot and a lot of young people. And Hicks converts this one, 64-62. Holland leaves, and Howard reports back in for DePaul. Blue Demons with the ball, down by two. Terrence Green against Randy Blair. Melvon Foster. Howard underneath Brundy puts it up and in. Standy Brundy. And that ties the game at 64. Again from Stephen Howard. Nice pass by Howard again. They've got that high low down very nicely. Scourge for Illinois State. Player. Temperton over Howard. This one will not go. Brundy with the board. Out of Terrence Green. Remember, Brundy has four fouls. He must be very careful. Green. To Howard, oh, baseline, what a, what a move. move, and it will not go. Whistle underneath and a foul. A great move, but he just couldn't get it to drop for him. Stephen Howard with a head fake to the middle, very quickly swings around and gets that ball. The fake was the really important part of that play. Now here's Brendan's play again. He does a real nice job of screening people off, getting a nice lob pass from Howard. You have to contribute a lot of that play to Howard. Nice pass again from Howard to Brundy two plays ago. Foul against Scary. Brundy will go to the line. Now Coleman back in, replacing Fowler. Coleman picked up his fourth foul at the 16-14 mark and returns with 6.03 left. And Brundy's at the line. Missing the shot. He has another one coming. Well, I have to tell you, how important free throws are in close ball games. DePaul under the 50% for the year and here tonight. Game tied at 64, and Grundy misses them both. The rebound to Gerard Coleman. I'd foul him every time when he had the ball down low. Instead of letting him shoot a layup, I'd foul him. Randy Blair against Foster. Now Coleman. Coleman to Blair. Working right side. The other way now. In the corner, Jackson. Jackson and Green matched up. And a foul here coming against Howard. On the bounce pass to Coleman. That's going to be the third foul against All Stephen foul Howard. Stephen Howard, aggressive overplay. Had that left arm out there. Hooked him a little bit with the right one. It's one and one. The bonus must be shooting. I don't know why they're taking the ball out of bounds underneath the basket. They've been in a bonus for five minutes. And Coleman, a 71% shooter on the year from the line, steps up there now for Illinois State. And he hits it. So 
Coleman steps up there and converts the first one. 65-64. That's eight for Coleman. He hits them both. Illinois State by two. Terrence Green with a basketball. Looking low, Howard, baseline. Turns, going to be short. Player away with it. We'll start back for the Redbirds. Blair working offside against Melvon Foster. On the right side, Jackson Lowe. Pepperton with a hook shot. Good. John Pepperton now in double figures, all 10 in the second half. That hook looked a little bit better than the first one. First one ended up behind the basket. That was a sweet jump hook by Pepperton and a big basket for the Redbirds. 68 64, Illinois State. Booth. Fakes now tries to put it up. Not going to go. Brundy saves it. The ball loose. And this is Booth into the crowd. Over the press table and into the crowd. Booth all right. He's got a shot. He's got a shot. 4.42 left to go in the ball game. Timeout on the floor. 68-64. Illinois State back in a moment. Down to four minutes, 42 seconds left to play in this one. DePaul down by four, 68-64. At the 8.51 mark, they were down by 10. Illinois State with the basketball. Sam Scary will inbound. He finds Blair in the backcourt. Blair to Pemberton. Now Jackson. Jackson and Coleman each with four fouls for Illinois State. Brundy four for DePaul. Scary. Blair. Blair top of the key. Moves right side, partially blocked from behind by Green, but it drops anyway. Blair with nine. Good strong shot. Blair, 185, 90 pounds. Got that up despite Green's block. Foster, a jumper out of Price. 70-66, Curtis Price with a pair. Cool customer, huh? Yes, sir. Pemberton, Scarriage, front court. Garage hands off the ball knocked away Foster up now ahead to Green Green and Pemberton back to the bucket good Green in between Pemberton and Blair it's a two-point game 70 68 Illinois State 330 left to go on this one pass Pemberton front court Pemberton left side Jackson Jackson to Scarriage Scarriage low Coleman Coleman inside, jumper over, Price will drop. Heated on the rim and fell through. Good touch by Gerard Coleman, big hoop. 72-68, that's 10 for Coleman. Terrence Green inside, down the lane, up and in. Terrence Green with a pair. 72-70, less than three minutes to play. Jackson, timeline, front court. Ricky Jackson. Now Scarriage. Blair. Randy Blair pulls it out. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Scarriage out of the corner. Will not go. Battle. Pemberton to Neiman. And Neiman took the shot as the ball goes out of bounds. Belonging to Illinois State. Good hustle the by baseline. Pemberton. Let's keep an eye on the baseline here. No, I don't think so. I don't think he was out of bounds on that. Good save. Looked like by Pemberton up in the air. And Neiman took a good shot. Got to get a little time to catch his breath here. The referee's being very good about that. Uh, he should maybe make the Paul take a timeout. The Paul could be important. Only two timeouts remaining. Pemberton, now Hicks. Hicks darting left side. Blair. This is Jackson. 
Jackson, ball off his foot, into the backcourt. Wait, that, he called that too quickly because Jackson sa actually saved the ball and the ball went back to the backcourt and nobody had touched it yet. Green had a layup maybe. Until Hicks has touched the ball, it's not a violation. And the Blue Demons get the basketball. Terrence Green with the basketball. 18 second half points out of Green. He lets her fly go, Terrence Green. Well, when you feel it, take control, and that's what T. Green has done. 72-72. Going to the basket, shooting a jumper. T. Green's got the feel. Let's hope he doesn't run out of gas. And a timeout, timeout. Illinois State. State. We have a minute, 39 seconds left to go in this ball game. And on the jumper from Terrence Green, the DePaul Blue Demons have tied this game 72-72. Green, at the half, had one point. He's exploded here in the second half. Well, a lot of times in a ball game, you start out, you really don't get in the flow of things, and you kind of get a couple of bad shots out of rhythm, and you, you lose your confidence. He came out in the first play of the second half. Remember, he nailed a jump shot, and I think got it right back into the ball game. And he's really by himself, obviously along with four of the teammates, but in the end of the game here, the senior is taking control. 72-72, Blue Demons have pulled even. They were down by 10 with 8.51 to play. Joey Meyer inside the DePaul huddle. This is really a good baptism for the young players from DePaul. You're probably in one of the toughest gymnasiums that they're going to play in all year long. And uh, you got a real live crowd. Uh, this is, uh, uh, Illinois State is a legitimate, you know, good ball club. And these kids are really going to have to keep their composure here at the end of the ball game and see what they can do. Blue Demons come back out with Price, Foster, Neiman, Brundy, and Green on the floor. Illinois State with a basketball. Scarich on the inbound to Blair. They have Jackson, Pemberton, and Coleman on the floor. Pemberton off the glass and in. Now they're going right at, they're going right at Brundy. You know he's got four fouls. Pemberton swung around, got real good position and Stanley couldn't do anything about it. That's 12 in the second half for Pepperton who had nothing at the half. Here's Brundy off the glass not going to go but a whistle there and a foul. A minute 11 left to go and Brundy who was moving the baseline will be going to the line. Another good feed from outside. Brundy gets real nice position down there. T. Green as Brundy screens off the baseline and that you know as we've said before, if you're an opponent, you'll foul him every time when he gets that position. Foul against Gary to second. DePaul 12 out of 23 at the line today. Illinois State 14 out of 17 at the line. And Brundy misses this one. So the Blue Demons continue to struggle mightily at the free throw line. Second shot won't go. Rebound Jackson. Jackson to Blair. Blair front court. Working against Foster. Less than a minute to play. A two-point game. Here's Blair and he is fouled. Blair, who coming into this game, was two out of four from the line on the year. Will be going to the line. Stephen Howard in. Price departs. And Randy Blair goes to the line. We'll see if the exchange of free throws is devastating to the Blue Demons. He hits it. Randy Blair converts it from the line. Blair now in double figures with 10. Blair probably caught a timeout to talk it over. Second shot will go. 76-72. A four-point spread. 53 seconds left. Again, you can't panic. Plenty of time left. There's only a four-point lead. You got to get a good shot. Hopefully, Blue going to the basket. Blue Demons with one timeout left. Terrence Green down the lane, up. It drops, but a whistle. A bucket will not count. With 46 seconds left, 
The foul against Blair. T. Green taking the ball to the basket like he should, making something happen. Goes all the way, gets fouled out high before the shot. And T will have to go to the free throw line. To try to hopefully not pick up where Rundy left off. Rundy struggling as the Blue Demons are from the line. Terrence Green at the line, 46 seconds left. Green looking at a one and one. It's good. 76 73. The final game here at Horton Fieldhouse. 76 73, Illinois State. Green misses this one, the ball out of bounds, belonging to Illinois State. Well, the Redbirds do not have to shoot 45 seconds in a game, 45 in a shot clock. I would imagine they'll pull the air out of it and take only a layout. Garage on the inbound. Blair comes up with a basketball. And Brundy, Brundy came up with a ball but fouls out in the process. Brundy charged with his fifth personal, stopping the clock with 41 seconds left. So Brundy fouls out with 24 points. 41 seconds left. 76-73, Illinois State. Blair will again be at the line. Stephen Howard. I don't know what the confusion is here, why the referee's not just handing the ball to Blair. Uh, really, the ball and huddling there is kind of icing Blair without really calling a timeout. The referee should probably speed up the ball game. Matthew Blair. Howard in the game as Brundy is fouled out. Blair picked it up and in. 77-73. Last time Illinois State defeated DePaul was in December of 82 here at Horton on December 7th, 72-62. And Blair misses. You gotta push Rebound. It up the floor now. Go now to the Terrence basket. Green. That's it. Down the lane, off the glass, it's good, and a charge coming, no basket. No basket to call, fourth foul on Green with 33 seconds left. Now this is the worst rule in college basketball. The rule states if the ball is up in the air before you make contact, the basket should count. If the ball's not in the air, it should count. Shouldn't count. Another there it angle. is. Green was the ball had not been released yet. Before he made contact, that probably was a good call, but that's the worst. That's the worst rule in college basketball. There that makes the Blair. Here's Pemberton. Pemberton denied the basket by Price. 27 seconds left. Price charged with a foul. That's his third. Here it is. Good recovery by DePaul. Got him across the body. Pemberton in going in for the dunk. Price says, no way you're dunking on me. You're going to have to earn those two. And Pemberton goes to the line. He has 12 points. He's high this year, 17 against Western Illinois. And Pemberton misses this one. Redbirds got to be careful they don't celebrate too quickly. Still plenty of time left if you really push the ball up the floor. And he misses this one as well. Howard rebounding to Green. 21 seconds left. Green lets her fly. Not going to go. Howard back up. It's going to drop with 15 seconds left. And time out to Paul. 77-75, a two-point game as the Blue Demons use what we have, their final timeout of the Illinois afternoon. You know, it's amazing uh, what free throws will do in a ball game and how many times it'll change the complexion in a, in a, in a close game like this. Brundy, uh, if he would have hit his four or five free throws, this game might be over in favor of DePaul. 
Good hustle by the Demons. They never quit the youngsters. Really go after it. D. Green attempting the three-point shot. I don't know about that. I might have tried to take the ball to the basket again to create something and uh, make things happen. So the ball again sitting here in a situation where they really have Dwayne uh, made the Breadbirds turn the ball over a lot, and that'll be in that diamond to one press. We're down to 15 seconds left. And we tabulated the Crash Mingelt Hustle Award. Yeah, Dwayne going ahead. Stanley and Brundy. Stanley uh, really hustled on the boards, a stretch defensively, and really uh, did a fine job here tonight. Well, Brundy, our Crash Mingelt Hustle Award recipient this afternoon, Crash contributing $100 to the Mars Meyer Scholarship Fund in the name of Stanley Brundy for his effort this afternoon. Brundy fouled out with 24 points. They, they put the ball down. They're counting. He's too much time. Yes, Harry sir. Took too much time. He did. The referee took the ball down because Illinois State was not out on the floor. In and time. that's the new rule. That's right. Started counting, and they did not get the ball in time. So the Blue Demons have a shot. That's the new rule. They're going to correct the clock, maybe. The clock now has 14 seconds. When we started, there were 15 seconds left yeah. on the clock. It'd be pretty tough to happen, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> well, that new rule, no one has to warn the benches. When the officials are ready to go, let's go. And that's what happened there. I don't know what they're discussing. I, I, you know, if the clock had 15 seconds and the ball has not come in, I mean, there's no change. They may, they may leave 14 seconds on the clock and wait a second before they start the clock. Well, we'll all sit here and guess. May have been a substitution problem, too. I don't know. That's what they're going to do. That's, that's what it is. That... Meanwhile, Joey Meyer on the far side reminding his players on the floor they have no timeouts left. Right, no time went off the clock. And they, they oh, put violation. a second back on the clock. If the player is not sitting in front of the scorer's bench, he can't come in the game. I think that's the problem, is a substitution problem. As soon as Donowal found out that he was not going to have the ball on offense, he changed to put two bigger, stronger defensive players in the ball game. And therefore, because no time went off the clock, but it did, as you said, went from 15 to 14, he is not allowed to put those players in the game. And they've corrected the clock. They now have a full 15 seconds left on the clock. Blue Demons will have the basketball. Well, we're still not straightened out yet. 77-75, Illinois State. I always thought if there was a violation, you could change players, even though time didn't go off the clock, but that's not what they said. Melvon Foster will inbound. Oh, Green, that's behind Price, us. Neiman, and Howard in the game. The inbound to Green. Green looking for room inside, forces it up, won't go. And we have a jump ball. And on the exchange, DePaul will get the basketball. Boy, it was Howard. Good move by T. Green, though, taking the ball to the basket, making something happen. He just took the ball, went down. Looks like there's some kind of contact here. It should be a foul on somebody. Nothing calling. Good hustle by Howard. Nine seconds left, and on the exchange of possessions, the Blue Demons hang on to the basketball. Now, T. Green moving too quickly here. And they tried to get it in, and a kick. A kick. Jackson kicked the ball, eight seconds left, so the Blue Demons get still another opportunity. Joey should change inbounds plays here if he can. He just did. And Foster will inbound it with eight seconds left. Now the rule here is the defensive man is allowed in between the player and the basket, not in between on the line. Foster to Neiman out of the corner. It's long. The ball goes out of bounds. Belonging to DePaul. Four seconds left. The Blue Demons have that, another shot. That could have been a break there for the Blue Demons. Four seconds left. Foster will inbound sideline. 
Into Terrence Green. Green puts it up at the buzzer. It's good! A three-pointer! Terrence Green wins it! A three-pointer, and DePaul wins this one 78-77. What a finish! Terrence Green, with no time left on the clock, hit a three-pointer, and the DePaul Blue Demons pull it out 78-77. And what a happy group! Of the Paul Blue Demons as they exit the floor. We're going the wrong way. They're so excited. We're going the wrong way to the locker room. Here's T. Green gets and the ball in. This is a Hail Mary if I've ever seen one. Here it is. He'll finish. Oh, he can look. He was line. inside the line. He was inside He two was feet. inside the line. No way that's a three-point play. There is no way. You're absolutely right. He no. will finish with 25 points. Terrence Green finishes with 25 points. We'll take another look at the play. John, here it is inside the line. Well, I don't know how they could miss this. This one's not even close. I didn't think it was a three-point play. If we let he's stepping away on it. Let's see who makes the call. Let's see who makes the call here. And the final the score. 78-77 to Paul. Back in a moment. <laughs> 